Hello guys, it's me, your favorite knitting content creator. Back with more scintillating knitting tutorials. In the last tutorial, we covered a very basic fair owl technique, which was the one by one vertical stripe. And as promised, in this tutorial, we're going to cover a slightly more complicated technique. It's still very easy, so don't be put off by this at all. To get going, we're going to need to grab a pair of circular long cord US size 6 needles as well as a long cord pair of US size 2. We're going to need some scissors and approximately 600 grams of wool, 300 in each color. The colors I've picked for this project are like a warm gray and like a muted cherry pink red. So the pattern itself is actually the exact same pattern as it as the one I did for this jersey, as well as the beaded ribnet tutorials. So if you haven't checked those out, I would suggest you do that. Essentially, what we're doing is we're casting on 20 stitches in the neck, and then we're increasing in the triangular shape going down until we get to the armpits. And we make four of these. We darn the sides together. This here is three that I've already darned together. You can see those are two pieces that have been joined. Um, and then what we do is we transfer the arm pieces. So here you can say that this is an arm and I would transfer these stitches onto some brightly colored thread or if you have actual stitch holders, that's great. I just use thread, um, by thread I mean wool. And then we knit it down the torso and we pick up the arms, we knit those and then we just finish off all the borders. The only exception with the pattern in this particular jumper is that instead of increasing one stitch on each side, I've been increasing in two stitches, which means that the jump from here to the armpit is going a lot faster. You can kind of see on this particular one, it's like it shoots out like this. And the reason I've done that is because this particular jumper, I like the size, but I just wanted something much bigger. So I wanted to create a much poofier jersey this time around. And the, uh, another reason why I'm doing this is because this pattern is two stitches. So it just looks nicer if like the entire pattern is being included. To get started, we're going to cast 20 stitches onto our circular needles. We're then going to introduce the new color and we're going to knit two stitches. And then two stitches of the original color, two stitches of the new color so on and so forth until we get to the end of the line. We'll then turn it around and we're going to add on two new stitches in the new color. Switching to pull, we're now going to knit back and we're going to keep the same color scheme. So. On the pink, I'm knitting the pink, and on the grey, we're knitting the grey, just in pull. Turn it around again and increase two new stitches in the grey. Now this time we're knitting in the knit stitch, but we're going to do opposite colors. So on gray we knit pink and on pink we knit gray. Can turn over to the wrong side again and we're going to add two new stitches in the pink. 
and we'll pull our way back on the wrong side but we're going to keep the color the same so we're pulling pink on pink and gray on gray We'll turn back to the right side again and we're going to add on two new stitches in the gray and on the right side we're going to knit back but we're going to do opposites so on gray we knit pink and on pink we knit gray Can turn back around to the wrong side add on two new pink and you're going to knit those back pink gray pink on pink gray on gray in the pull stitch you can turn back around to the right side and you're going to add on two new gray and you're going to knit that entire row back in the gray in the knit stitch you can then turn that back around to the wrong side and add two new stitches in the gray and we're going to pull all those stitches back in gray and that's the entire pattern so now all we're going to do is we're going to repeat these steps from here all the way through to here and we're going to do that until we arrive at 100 stitches on our needles you can start by casting on two new pink stitches and you will knit those gray sorry you will knit those pink so we'll put two new pink stitches here and when we begin a new block of pattern like this, we will knit pink, gray, pink, gray, pink, etc. But when you come back around to the right side, it will be opposite colors on the knit side and the right colors, matching colors on the pull side. When you arrive at your 100 stitches on the needles, you can then transfer this triangular piece over onto the um, main set of needles with all the other pieces. If you don't have stitch holders, um, stoppers like me, I just use a rubber band. It seems to do the trick most of the time. And then just make sure that you transfer wrong sides facing the wrong sides and right sides facing the right sides. And you can literally just move your stitches over like so we're then going to darn these two sides up here starting from the top and working our way down to the corner over here it's not really possible for me to match these up perfectly stitch by stitch so what i do is i just try and match the patterns together and so in kind of randomly but at least keep the pattern together as close as possible okay So you can see here it's actually it's not perfect but it still looks pretty good and we're just going to go all the way to the end okay so once we've donned all the edges together and we're ready to move over to the next part we're going to pick up our original needles again and we're going to reintroduce our color scheme and when we get to the arms so remember it's four triangles one is going to be the front of the torso, one an arm, the next will be the back of the torso, and the other an arm, in that order. So we've introduced the new colors and we're ready to move the arm stitches over to some spare thread. This is how I do it. So we're literally just going to slip some stitches off the needle like this, pick them up with a crochet hook. Mm, like that and then 
take the wool and pull it through those stitches. Like that. And you're going to keep going through doing this until you get to the end. So just remember that when you start knitting in the round your torso area, you are going to be knitting permanently in the same direction, which means that you are constantly knitting and there's no per. And for this, there's going to be no real break or moment when you'll know when you are going to be making this pattern. Because previously we would knit this row and would pull to finish the square and then we'd knit this row and we'd pull to finish the square now we're just in knit which means you've got to consciously make this break so the pattern is two of one color two knits of one color and then once you've knitted two stitches when you come back and you can see you've knitted two stitches you're going to switch over to the next color and you're going to do that until you've created this like block flower shape whatever you see I see a flower sometimes I see a little square um, once you see this shape or two four six lines you need to include two lines of gray and then you can start again so that's important okay so I have knitted this jersey down to the length that I would like it to be and I'm ready to add the waistband and what I've did is once we got to that point remember that we're knitting round and round in a circle and we're doing this pattern so once I had knitted out the two rows of grey in between the, the little stars um, flowers diamonds whatever you see I cut off whichever color I didn't want the band to be and I kept the color that I did want the band to be which is the pink and we transferred over onto a much thinner set of needles and I'd just like to bring to your attention now how even though I decreased to like a needle that is around the third the size of the needles I was using when I was knitting out this pattern the size of the stitch is almost identical so that is something to consider when I was making this jersey in the previous tutorial when I got to the waistband I just made the waist with the exact same size needles as the ones I used to knit this up and as a result you can see that this band is actually much thicker and I don't really like it and I you know I've done it now I'm not gonna undo it but that's the result of that and I would have wanted these stitches actually to be thinner they're not but at least they're not bigger and yeah the needle difference is like this big and I don't even have a pair of needles smaller than this so that's that's that but yeah so we moved over onto a pair of smaller needles and I'm doing here in the pink a two by two rib knit. And I'm going to do this probably for about this much more. Okay, so we've knitted out the waistband, it's now long enough, and we've picked up the neck stitches. If you're unsure how to pick up the neck stitches, in my previous tutorial, the one by one vertical stripe fail tutorial, I go over this in a lot of detail. So you can pop over to that one. All of my tutorials are timestamped. If you just go into the description, you can see exactly where to go to get to this point. But we're going to knit this out now, at probably a couple more centimeters, and then I'm going to turn it. For you who are unsure how to go into the description and to get to my timestamps, if you go on so if you look here it says how to knit in fair l one by one one vertical stripe beginner friendly and then underneath that it says 
160 views one month ago and then dot 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 more if i tap on that more this comes up and if i read from the beginning here a beginner friendly introduction da da da, da, da you will need the next paragraph pair of circular needles da, da 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 and then it says dot 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 more if i press on more all of this comes up and if i go down here and I look at these little blue numbers. These are the timestamps for all the different parts of the video and what to do. So if I go and I look, um, picking up or so do do, the torso, waistband, picking up the neck, there it says 2504. If I press on that, there is going to take me directly to that part of the tutorial. So yeah. That's just a little bit of information for you. Okay, so it's now time to pick up these arm stitches that we put aside and we're going to knit out our arm and a little cuff. For this next part, you're going to need a pair of short cable circular knitting needles in the same thickness that we used for the torso. Okay, so part of my nails, I need to get nail polish remover today. I'm going to do that. So we're going to start at the first stitches over here and we're going to grab our needles and we're just literally going to slide the knitting needle in, pull the wool out. Slide the needle in, pull the wool out. And you're going to go around and pick up each and every one of these little stitches that you've put aside here. Cool, so all the stitches are now on the circular needles and if I look closely over here, I can see that this little pattern over here, you see like this shape we're making here, it starts there. So it starts with this stitch here and this stitch here. So the first two stitches we're going to knit with the grey wool. We're now ready to reintroduce the pink wool, so we just grab the loose end and we just stick our little needle in there, casually drape it over, you can hold on to both ends like that, and just knit it in. Stick your needle in, let go of the short piece of wool and knit the second one. And then you stick to the exact same sequence for this pattern, so that's two gray to pink to gray to pink for two rows and then you swap over and on the pink unit gray and on the gray unit pink for two rows and you swap over Oop. and then you do the pink gray pink gray again so that is three rows exactly well three sets of rows so two by two by two and then and then we use two rows of grey to break between the two patterns. And we're going to do this until we have knitted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these little patterns. To be perfectly honest with you, oh god, um, I think I could have added in one extra one. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you to knit eight of these little patterns. And then I'll show you what to do to make a little cuff. The arm has now um, been knitted out. I've got all seven of my little details here and I'm ready to go over and make a little wrist. So the very first thing we're going to do is a bannon slash cut off the colour we're not going to use and we're going to keep the colour we will use. So I've opted for the pink to be my borders so we're going to cut off the grey now. And then we're going to pick up a pair of smaller circular short cord circular needles um, just to give you a gauge. I think this is a size 2, around about there, US size 2. And we're going to come in here and we're going to pick up our pink. And we're going to knit the first row. We're going to knit one, 
sorry, we're gonna knit all of them onto these needles now. Now that we've got all of our stitches on the smaller needles, next up we're gonna begin the decreasing process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna knit one and then we're gonna knit two together. One regular knit, second one, two stitches together. And you're going to go round and round like this, just doing the same thing, one, knit, knit two together, knit one, knit two together, until you come back around. Okay, so we just come back around and we're actually going to do that now again. And the reason is we want to um, get down to 40 stitches on our needles. So we're going to do this again and then we're going to count how many stitches we've got left here. And if you need to keep going a little bit more, we're going to keep doing that until you get to 40. Okay, so we've come around for the second time and I've just did a quick count. And I'm sitting at 42 stitches. So I'm going to cast off two more sets. So knit one, cast off two, knit one, cast off two. And that should bring me to 40. Okay, perfect. We're now at 40. So the next important thing to do now is to grab, well, you're probably starting a new, but I'm going to grab my other cuff. And we're going to count out exactly how many stitches I knitted in the pink. So if I start all the way down here and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm going to count all the way up, I count 20 rows. So what we're going to do now is switch over to the two by two rib knit, which is knit two, and then you pull two. I'm going to start with a pull because I've been knitting this whole time. So do a quick pull, one, two, and knit two. Pull two, and knit two. And we're going to do this until we have 20 rows in total. So we should have about two or three rows here and we're probably going to add on 17 or 18 more rows and I'll show you what to do once we have done an entire cuff like so. We finally reached 20 rows and we're ready now to cast off. Once you finish casting off, you can flip your little sleeve um, cuff inside out and grab your long end and your crochet hook. And you're going to feed this long piece through the neighboring um, stitch, pull it through. And then I like to tie it in there just to sort of level that step out. And this is how I do that. Let's do like a half a loop like this. And then I'll tie these ends together. Nice and tightly. You can see it just sort of like evens this area out. And then I'll take these two pieces and I'll feed them in through the stitches here. Once it's gone through enough, you can just trim that off. 
and sort of stretch it out and your cuff is now done our jersey is almost done but at this point we're just going to bring our attention to the armpits so you can see we've got some little holes here that we just need to fix up so we can at this point turn our jerseys inside out and we're going to fix up all the little loose ends now I also at some point dropped a stitch so I just took a bobby pin and sent it through that stitch and then pushed it through to the other side. Um, it would appear because of the pattern that this jersey is made up of I compensated for that last stitch and I carried on knitting so ordinarily you would pick it up and you would pull it through but because I compensated for it I'm just going to um, bond it in here and make sure it doesn't run and carry on with our lives. For the drop stitch I'm literally just going to take a loose piece of wool. I'm going to pick up those stitches now with a crochet hook like so and then pull the wool through there tie it together quite simply like this Nice and tight and then we'll trim that a little shorter and then I'll just take my crochet hook and feed it in here. Okay, so there's the drop stitched all sorted out. Now let's move on to the armpits. So we're going to grab the end of the dominant color wool and a crochet hook. And we're just going to line these ends up together nice and neatly. And just literally crochet the ends together like this. Other loose ends such as this one, we're just going to do my really fancy knot solution. So just sort of go in there, pull half of it through like that, tie it in a good few times. And then just trim it off. And it is all done. We're ready to wear. And I absolutely love this jersey. It's nice and poofy. I love this design. My cat, sorry. And um, yeah, it was super easy. So hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.